Well, what a surprise. Disney approval racing is at an all-time low. Yeah, reaching pretty dangerous levels. Seems like the public uh, is disenfranchised with Disney. Not a massive surprise. Not a huge surprise, uh, especially when you take a look at their stock, which is... Well, let's put it this way. It's not recovered. Uh, it's not recovered from yesterday. Whereas yesterday, they had... When you look at one day. Oh, yeah, it looks okay. Oh, yeah, no, it doesn't, does it? So, this... Sort of nice peak there. Yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, Monday. Yeah, yeah, okay. Now, this was where they were announcing they were going to be doing the earnings call. And then they announced what happened on the earnings call, and then it just cratered, basically. So... Yeah, pretty bad, ladies and gents. Pretty damn bad for Disney, anyway. Uh, it's not recovered. And if we look at month... <coughs> Christ. Six months. Better story. This is when Nelson Peltz announced the proxy war. This is when it announced he'd lost the proxy war. And it's never recovered since. And it probably won't, actually. Not this year, anyway. Let's put it that way. But like I said, we're here to look at Disney's approval rating. Which is real bad. Uh, basically, consumer approval is crashing for Mickey Mouse. Not good. So, Rasmussen reports uh, has a reputation of accuracy. We don't need the report to know. People aren't really approving of Disney, but it's still good to see. Uh, and he's reporting that consumer reactions to the Walt Disney Company uh, has basically them very, very shocked, to be fair. Uh, if you think the modern political candidates are divisive... They're still not on par with where Disney has been placed, basically. Uh, perhaps the not-so-secret agenda was the situation that's uh, caused their demise. Like this. Makeup boy. In a kid's program. Yeah. So, no, the political website 538, which ranks pollsters according to their own rubrics, gives Rasmussen reports a, a 0.3 rating for accuracy. In which a negative number is considered excellent. So that's minus 0.03. Uh, this gives them an equal score with other reputable polling firms. Such as University of New Hampshire Survey Center. Public Policy Institute of California. University of California Berkeley. Uh, and Institute of Governmental Studies. So just as a bit of background. They are a legit poller basically. In Rasmussen's latest polling on Disney. The firm found that the Walt Disney Company had an astounding 40% of respondents rate it as an unfavorable company. 40%? That's staggering. However, that poll was taken in 2023. Today, as the Disney stock is hammered due to crashing box office and theme park demand, Rasmussen has found that the unfavorability of Disney has actually increased to 45%. That's mad. So that would be atrocious for a politician, but for a company that is in a public company is intended to generate content for families, uh, you know, make them feel safe for children as well. It's catastrophic, which this article says. Uh, you might consider, for example, that if a fast food restaurant had even a 10% unfavorable rating, it would correlate to a significant decrease in sales. I mean, that's, is that basically, it's like going to a two or three star reviewed restaurant. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do it, would you actually? You, you really wouldn't do it. I wouldn't. So, yeah, not great. Um, so, for a company that's essentially a family entertainment corporation, having such a high and favourable rating is monumentally more challenging to address. Which, yeah, it is. So, it gets worse, amazingly. So, according to Rasmussen, Disney's favourability is not even in positive territory any longer. And despite Disney wading into very divisive topics with confidence of its moral superiority, the company now has a lower favorability than former President Donald Trump, which is funny because, of course, they hate him. Uh, the reason for this is that not every survey taker decided to vote in a positive way for Disney if they avoided the unfavorable response. A significant number of poll participants found a middle ground of not taking either side, and that means Disney's actually in a negative water, which you can see here. That's real bad. They really screwed up. My God. So the survey arrives as Disney stock tumbled. Like I said. It, it, literally 10% in one day. So more than 10%. It was about 11%, I think. 
Um, and that was Tuesday during an earnings call in which Bob Iger was finally free from the pesky Nelson Peltz. But this is the thing. He's still not done anything. Not done anything good. Uh, things didn't go well, obviously. And perhaps even more clearly, the survey results found by Rasmussen seem to have parallel findings to the market at large, which is true. So the titan of entertainment, known to many as the Mouse House, reported earnings for the March quarter that surpassed expectations of Wall Street. Sure, fine. But consumer distaste for the company seems to scare both the C-suite and the investors who listened in. If I was a share, I'd be really angry. But also, you kind of get what you deserve because you you didn't vote for Nelson Pels. So that's on you. So by midday Eastern time on Tuesday, Disney's stock had fallen by 10.4%. Trading at 104.41. And ultimately closed the day at 105. And what is it now? So, I mean, it's still at 105, basically. So it's just, it's just shit. It's just not done very well. So the financial fortitude of Disney's parks and experiences was relayed as a bright spot, driving both top-line revenue and bottom-line profits during the first quarter of 2024. Revenues in this segment rose by 10%, while operating income saw a 12% increase. Despite these gains, Disney has tempered expectations, so they've actually said that the next quarter is going to be worse, potentially. Which is crazy. That's crazy. But revenues are just going to expect to be flat. How do you expect to do well? When you report on these things. I mean, it's madness. Now it says this. More on that in the coming days. As we dive into what might have given Disney the Hong Kong boost for Disney Parks. In the reported quarter. That is true. There is you know, the Hong Kong stuff. The, the more abroad elements. But yeah. Where they, where they should be earning money. Big family sector. You know. Huge per. Like nah. Garbage. Nah, they really killed it. Con I mean, a consumer approval. We don't need. We don't need the report and poll to see that. We can see it. We can see it everywhere. Um, and I do wonder whether this will tide over. You know, sort of or carry over to any of the Disney products moving forwards. I think it probably will. I think it has largely anyway. But what do you guys think? I mean, they're on par with Donald Trump, I guess, and he, you know, unfavorable rating, so that's bad, isn't it, I guess? Even though he was quite well liked at certain points, but still, interesting. What do you guys think? Leave your thoughts down below. Take care. Bye-bye now. <laughs>